and a welcome to 21st Century Vitalism. This is a podcast exploring how we can best maintain a sense of energy, inspiration, and wakefulness when dealing with the unique stressors of this very strange yet potent time. My name is Brett Kane, and I'll be your host on this journey. And in case you missed it, this is a variety show. If you had any doubts about that, today's guest will surely put them to rest. Matthew Silver is a performance artist who specializes in the art of clowning. You've undoubtedly come across one of his many viral videos, which altogether have garnered millions of views on YouTube. And in case you are unfamiliar, I'd recommend pausing this episode and checking them out. It's okay. I'll be here when you get back. Are you back? All right, let's continue. After his street performances propelled him into the zeitgeist, Matthew has gone on to create a clown comedy show called The Idiot's Hour, where he has amassed a growing community of fellow performers who are pushing the boundaries of comedy. He's also gone on to host performance workshops to help inspiring artists develop their voices in style. So if you want to stay plugged in with his show updates and to see his consistent drip feed of reels, check him out on Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok. If you're feeling called to support this show, consider signing up for our Patreon at patreon.com slash 21st Century Vitalism. We also have a YouTube you can subscribe to or you can follow us on Instagram and like us on Facebook. For those who are new around here, we have a show every two weeks uh, and it's a wide variety of different subjects, things like meditation, we have somatic therapies, environmentalism, art making. Again, it's really anything to help you orient in these often challenging times. So I hope that this finds you well, wherever you may be. Uh, That's it for my intro. So kick back, drink some tea, do some stretches, and most importantly, open your hearts for Matthew Silver. Right on. Matthew Silver, hello. Welcome to the show. Uh, I just want to start by saying uh, it's a huge pleasure to have you on, man. Uh, I've been looking forward to this. How are you doing today? Doing, uh, I'm doing good. I just, I'm fixated on all the work I got to do. I put it off a day, it, but that's okay. I'm, I'm still present. I'm excited. That's, yeah. that's, that's what I was thinking of two seconds ago, but here yeah. we are in the moment again. Yeah, that's that's the the ever everlasting work, right? It's just like all the it things never to end. do. Your inbox yeah. doesn't empty. Yeah, I've tried, but I'm like, oh wait, I have I have to talk to these people, so that's right. a part of it. You yeah. got to pace yourself. That's it. Yeah, that's very true. You not freak out all the time when you think you got to get work done, but you don't. So, which is uh, probably something I did last week. I freaked. <laughs> yeah. It happens to the best of us, especially when we're self-employed and you have deadlines. Like I, I find that when I'm so, as a self-employed person, like I am my harshest boss. Like I'm way more mean to myself than any boss I've ever had in terms yeah. of just like staying on track. It's just like maybe I should have gotten a regular job. <laughs> yeah, it makes you think, right? Yeah. But then yeah. You do, you'll do – okay, you'll do the regular job and maybe – you like it that a supervisor tells you what to do, but then you'll then people are like, "Oh, I hate the regular job. I'd rather be independent." Then you'll be independent, and then you'll realize how much harder it is, and then maybe you'll have compassion for all your employers. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I do think with the, the independence. I mean, there is a sense of freedom with that, though, in terms of your expression. You know, I find that when you're in like a corporate situation, you don't really have the liberty to just be who you are. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, you're okay. It was making noise, so I shut it off. Yeah. Okay. Um, Welcome back. (laughs) So, yeah, for today, I really wanted to explore um, just your work. You know, you have been on my radar for quite some time now, first with uh, the street performer performances, but then also with what you're doing now with the Idiot Hour and with these workshops you're hosting, I, I've always thought from the moment I saw him, like, this guy, he's got he's got something going on that I bet is fascinating to explore. So um, with that, you know, I wanted to start off by just kind of starting at the beginning. I'm sure you've talked about this before, but what brought you into the world of performance and as an extension 
Uh, what do you feel like the role of a performer is in the modern age? Um, well, I guess it just, you know, you know, your parents, they just bring you to shows or you see a lot of shit on television and I'm a child of the, the TV era. My, I mean, my parents just put me in front of the TV and I'm like, I want you, you're, you're, you're just like anybody, anybody. You're like, I want to do that. I want you. And you're like excited. When's my opportunity to shine and blossom. And then, and then maybe you have these, these dreams that they're cool, but then, well, whatever. Dreams are dreams. You know, you just, have dreams and I just I see performance as a way of expression I mean whatever you want to do in life you're just you're trying to open a portal for we're all trying to open a portal for for love and community and I mean now I'm finally doing it I mean I'm 45 I was I mean I was thought that I was doing it by street performing but I don't know. That was more like I was playing the role of the lonely he hero, you know? And I don't know. I don't know the way social media is made. It seems like that's what everybody's doing. Like, we're all being like, fuck everybody else. Fuck this world. I'll create my own world. And I, I hate to say it, but that's the cliche I'm following right now. I'm like, the you know, you, you just, you become aware of, this world and its its drawbacks and how people hold you back, then you, you're like, well, if I don't create a world where people are inspiring each other to, d to do something with their life and not be so fucking boring and just watch online television every fucking night, I mean, that's what I'm scared of. I, I'm scared of a future where that's all I'm doing. So I'm like, I'm scared of shit. I don't want to be... Because people don't realize this thing is so unconscious what's happening that before you know it, you're going to be trapped in your own apartment, which is your comfort zone. And you'll just be watching all these other people and, I don't know, judging them. And then who are you talking to? You're just writing little things on the internet. I I mean, that's my motivation. I'm, I, I, I feel like people... They you you have to make a look. It's it's a shitty world. We're all aware of it, but you have to make a conscious effort to like fucking do something with your life. And if you don't, it it doesn't matter what it is. Just follow your heart. What whatever your heart and your brain. I I I tell people start with your heart and then your brain will follow. Not the other way around. We live in an intellectual world where a lot of people are following their brain. And they're leaving, the, they're throwing away their heart all together. It's a comp, it, it, we got to find a middle ground between intellect and heart. Like, I don't know, like some, one of my famous, uh, one, no, famous, one of my uh, people that inspire me is Alejandro Jodorowsky. And he wrote this book called The Spiritual Journey of Alexander Jodorowsky. And one of his teachers is this Zen, uh, a Japanese Zen teacher. His name is Imo. I think it was emo, but he, he said, die intellectual, live with the heart, you know? Oh yeah. But, and we could, we could just do that occasionally because this thinking thing is creates illusions filled with illusions and people attached to it so much that they're, they're stuck. They block themselves. This thing blocks you. It says you're not, this brain could say you're not good enough. This brain could well, this brain could also say you're great and you're you're worthy of all whatever. It's it's really I think I mean, maybe some people will hate this, but I don't I think at as time of I I think we should just I was going to say drop that like the end of the world is coming. So what? The end of mm. maybe the end of the world is coming. We don't know because the future is abstract. So that's just more thinking. That's the same. 
you're you're caught in time and and I don't want to be caught in in a time loop anymore. I'm just like we're here now. Let's create heaven on earth here or maybe it's not. It's like it's like what it's like the work is an internal. It's not it is external. External helps the internal, but it's more internal. I mean, we do it for other people, but we're we're doing it for ourselves. Yeah. Sorry, this is the way I think. No, I hear you. I hear you for sure. So how do you feel like what you've been doing in life uh, with this style of performance has internally affected you? Like what kind of transformations do you feel like you have kind of undergone by... Well, you you know, you learn, you, you get out of your head. And uh, that's one good thing about performing is getting out of your head and it, making it social. It's around people. You want to be around people. And then... Then people say, I don't want to be around people anymore because, yeah, because people irritate you. But we're all people and you you yourself irritate other people. But you don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear that you irritate people. I don't want to hear it. I mean, yeah. I'll I'll open up to it. I, I'm practicing, I, you know, not taking things personal. You uh, You read the Four Agreements. I actually have it tattooed on me. <laughs> I got uh, Roman numerals for it. <laughs> I have all four of them. Yeah. It's yeah. good to remember. So every time you look at your wrists, oh, I yeah. remember. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, not taking anything personal. Um, you know, I could really see um, with your style of performance, the provocative nature of it. I'm sure you get a lot of different responses from people. You know, I think a lot of people probably are like, I love this. That's That was my response. But I'm sure, especially in New York, there's going to be some folks who are like, what is going on here? And I, I feel like, you know, when I think about people's response to others, like it's so much of just a reflection of what they have going on and their own inability to connect with their own, whatever they see in somebody else. There's like something within them that's like, I wish I could do something like that. I you wish know. I could do something like that. Yeah. Sounds like Forrest Gump. Yeah. <laughs> we all got that internal jealous Forrest Gump. <laughs> Was it jealous or envy? Is envy more of a positive word? Um, I think yes. both are negative. <laughs> oh well, I guess we we jealousy is just a form of inspiration. You get jealous, yeah. and you're like, "Wait a minute, he's saying or she's saying or they saying that I can do it." Yeah. At the yeah. end of the day, I don't like this thing of. We speak for everyone. We're one mm. day we're gonna talk and we're gonna be speaking for everyone, the soul, the spirit. I don't I don't like uh, identity anymore. Or why do you think people have identity crises? They don't know who they are anymore. They get hit an age. They're so used to their youth and being that, but it's it's. It's like identif you just gotta throw all identities away. It's just we're trying we're we're evolving as a species and I, I think the next this is the age of Aquarius, so hopefully that means less this and more I don't know. I, I love how Alan Watts explained it. It's like a well, it's your heart, but it's, he would just, it's the, he explained the present moment, like banging on a gong. It's this. Yeah. Don't explain yeah. what this is. Don't attach yourself to any more ideas. Yeah. Well, we, we tend to do it anyway. So I, I guess it's a balance of letting your ideas, you know, your brain, just see them as ideas rather than getting attached. Yeah. Because yeah, then you like could be more free. You could think like the silliest of thoughts, you know, like, like, um, oh, one day I'm going to be a clown with um, an elephant nose. And that's what I'm going to be for the rest of my life. And then one day you're like, no, I'll, I'll just be a uh, tuna fish sandwich. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there's something, you know, I really like what you're saying about this overly attached to identity thing 
And I think that yeah. that's really at the heart of a lot of, uh, I guess people who are really struggling with like mental something is that they grew up and they had this idea of who they were and it was based in the valors of youth and just this very specific, you know, they, they took in movies kind of like you said earlier and like, I want to be like that person. And then as we get older and certain things don't come to fruition, we're like, well, I'm a failure because I'm not that thing that I thought I wanted to be 20 years ago. And then it kind of solidifies into this rigidity and then they lose that kind of creative thinking. And I think that that's really, you know, I talk to a lot of like meditation teachers who are in their 70s and they're so playful, they're so fun, they're so unobstructed. But then you talk to some other people in their 70s and they're grumpy. They're like grumpy old folks and we all know who they are. And it's like to not become that, you have to be able to hold on to yourself loosely and allow whatever's coming through, whether it's a tuna fish sandwich or whatever is just naturally arising rather than the story that you stuck with. You know, that's where I also think the benefit of being self-employed is, is you have the flexibility to bring on new things. You're not stuck in one role, you know? Yeah, you got to uh, get over yourself every day, every moment and, and um, and then, I guess even if you have bad days, you gotta you gotta appreciate that. You gotta look at that in a form of gratitude. I don't know if that those thoughts connect. Yeah, no, I I think you know having a sense of gratitude gives a sense of space to where you're able to go through those bad days and you don't identify too much. You know, it's just like, wow, this is this is what's arising. It's not a tuna fish sandwich. It's something that's less stellar, but that's okay because I'm not really that either. I'm not any of these things. It's just kind of a passing of energy that kind of keeps rolling forward. Right. I mean, someone told me that it's a, really it's about like how can you just shift your perception and raise your vibration? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's it. You live day by day, and it's long. I mean, days are long. Days get long, but it's short, too. It happens like that, but it feels so long. And But it's time is an illusion, too. If you're present, you didn't, you're not even in the world of time. And I remember this painting of um, a guy, and he was stuck in... It says the painting was called Time. And it's just this guy, and he's just like, uh, he's like having a mental breakdown. And, uh, and it, it was called time, and that made a lot of sense because that's how I feel a lot, you know. I'm, I mean, as 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 I strive to be more lighter. I mean, I was born. I was born learned ab about money and time and and efficiency and so i i'm we're all affected by the old ways and we're all trying to evolve past that because we know that the the systems that be the the people that are in charge they don't give a fuck for the the future not everybody but they don't they don't give they don't they, they make these, I don't know, I'm talking very generalized here. I don't know if that's correct of me, but people who have the money, they make companies and they don't make companies that evolve our true nature. They just, they're like, I want to take over the world. So they, they find ways to keep people locked in the system because there's no choice. Like, you you can't just throw away money because yeah. they who whoever invented money and whoever owns money they made sure that we'll be stuck in a system that we we'll always need these papers yeah yeah and, and and they're they're nothing you can't eat them <laughs> you can't eat them yeah we've we've we're trained to think that we need a third party to evolve yeah and then and people with a lot of money they can have the opportunity to, to evolve you know they they 
they could have nobody bothering them. But if you don't have a lot of money, you're going to be constantly harassed by assholes. Yeah, yeah. Well, Maybe I'm where... the asshole. Maybe I'm harassing these people. Well, I think that's where the opportunity to evolve is, you know. I mean, you could look at it that way in terms of you have money and space and resources, so therefore you can have space to do whatever evolution it is. But I'll be, like, totally honest with you. When I see, like, videos of you interacting with people or people who are spontaneously opening their hearts to others, that, to me, is the evolution that I want to see in terms of connectivity and me too. smiling yes. and yeah. being in like a giant metropolis and then you know coming across a performance like yours and people opening up to that and dancing with you and talking about love that to me is like so much more powerful than any of the vested financial interests as sauron like as they are you know it's really looking into mordor from lord of the rings but you know it's these small it's grassroots yeah. Yeah. things you know that yeah. it's small grassroots things it's it's people who are carrying their own ring you know feeling the weight of all of mordor in them but still providing this this gift to everybody you know to me that's like it's courageous that's warriorship you know and that's why you know I, i'm really drawn to your platform and others like you who are bold in their expression and finding a way to uplift you know, and that's something that I think also really drew me to your platform was um, the environmental effect that you seem to have, whether it's through the Idiot Hour, uh, your street performances of yesteryear, just the way that like a space is changed when somebody is genuinely expressing is so alchemical and uh, contagious. And it's just like, oh, man, we need more of that. We need more disruptive um, just expressions, outbursts of heart. And, mm. you know, I just think that, um, I just think that's so important in this day and age, especially as it gets darker, as the timeline grows more dense, you know, I think, uh, the need for that is ramped up as well. And the potency too, you mm. know, lights shine brightest in the darkest times. And, um, yeah. Yeah. So, that was something I had just thought. Um, how, how do you feel? You know, I'm not, you know, I'm in Michigan. I've never connected with you in person. I have people who have. I have friends who've seen you at Electric Forest or um, I think Shangri-La, um, so music festivals. And they said that you're just, you're lovely and it's been really good. But how do you feel like people typically receive um, kind of the art of clown, clowning? I don't know what you would call that. People naturally want to act silly. Um, it's already innate in us. They do it with their children, unless they're bad parents. I don't know. My dad was pretty silly. I mean, clown is just a, a word to call it. Clowning around. Clown town. Um, I mean, it, it's something that, you know... It's funny. It's like taking something seriously that doesn't. It's about not being serious, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, the 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 response is natural. I, I don't know. The only thing that I was doing that was off was I was wearing um, an unexpected costume, you know, like a woman's bathing suit, or I thought it was funny just to wear a speedo, and you know, and and I, um. People, unfortunately, saw that as a sign, oh, this guy's a pervert, you know, or it's sexual or something. It wasn't sexual. I was trying to – and, you know, you know, with the first uh, videos, uh, they were they were seen as, oh, this guy's trying to mock homeless people or insane people or people on drugs. I mean, that's what the video was titled, Mentally Insane Person, Words of Wisdom. Mm -hmm. But – um. No, I wasn't on drugs. I was a performance artist, clown, or whatever what whatever people wanted to call me. I mean, I, I originally I wanted to be like, uh, I guess Steve Martin or Robin Williams or, or you know, I just wanted to be a comedian of some sort. But I wasn't. I didn't know how to reach their level. I mean, there's no, 
even if you take a class, you, you there's I, I always had a problem with teachers because they didn't give you they it was you you'd take a class and mostly they'd be talking. And they got to realize like when you talk so you got to make a class if performance class you got to make it more give that person stage time too. Don't have these horribly long critiques or I don't I don't know. I don't know. It's just all everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's got a butthole, you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 So with that, um, you know, you kind of had mentioned uh, maybe some people have felt uncomfortable when you're in a performance. How do you relate to discomfort? You know, like when you're you're on the stage, on the stage, the street, and you're recognizing that in somebody, but you're in this role, you're kind of acting in this way. Um, I don't yeah, know. It's you... very innate. If somebody's uncomfortable, I don't go near them. I I can't really tell what people are thinking um, because, I mean, people might have a face that always looks upset or something, So they, but they might be just observing. It, it, like a face of curiosity sometimes looks like they're upset, like. Yeah. So, I, I mean, who knows what people are thinking? I, I mean, I had some reactions. There was this, most people didn't like that I was wearing a Speedo in the park because there were children. So I had one guy who took my props and he was throwing them all over the place. He said, there are children in the park. Stop performing. And, and he threatened to beat me up and kill me. And... Wow. Eventually, I made a I made an internet post, and but then people told me maybe I should just leave the park, and wait until it, you know he and I uh, eventually stopped going to Union Square and I went to Astor Place and watched, and then months later I hear that the guy got excluded. He he got sent to prison because oh, um, wow. he sexually harassed a woman. You know. <laughs> Wow, the pot calling the kettle black. You know, one thing I, I was aware, though, anybody that was angry about what I was doing, I would find that there was more problems with this person. Yeah. Like, I would find out, like, I found out the later, you know, the people that had problems with what I was doing, they didn't like it. Maybe they were conservative. I have no idea, you know? Yeah. But yeah. they, they had issues themselves. And the right. people that were open and free with what I'm doing, they're like, yes, psychologically, they were more well-balanced. They might have done that themselves at shows or different street performances. They they saw me as a reflection yeah. of themselves. But people yeah. who don't like, they... But because I was doing, you know... I was I was trying to raise the vibration of the planet. I thought by doing that, it would hit like a bubble of consciousness, and the, and then the age of queerness, Aquarianess would would happen, and everybody, then everybody could just talk to everybody and just see people as spirit rather yeah. than their body. Yeah, a lot a lot of people identify with body. So as I get older. I think it just becomes easier and easier not to identify with your body. Yeah. But when that, when when you're young, you identify with you're like for everybody pushes the body, the TV pushes the body, the parent, you're a boy, you're a girl, blah blah blah. This is what boys do. This is what and you just you and then there's a wrong and right and you identify with wrong and right so you're spiritually we're fucking all the children up and and that and this process just keeps going there's people that are changing the system but it's very slow right yeah and you have the overlord and they want to change the system too so they have more power or i don't know what the overlord is but they've already got the power how does how does something it's like here's the overlord here's the the heart this i don't i don't know yeah maybe it doesn't matter see 
see, I'm, I'm, I'm not enlightened. I, 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 I'm inspired by enlightenment. Well, you know what? We're all enlightened, even when we're not enlightened. So, yeah. I sound like an idiot. That's why I like this show, The Idiot's Hour. The mind is just an illusion. It, it or, it's already. It, you know, my mind is making me think I did something wrong, but I know I didn't do anything wrong. I know it's an illusion. I let that go. You know. Yeah. Yeah, that's but kind of the. The constraints of this medium too there's so much that i talk about with people that is experienced and it's like all right now let's try and put it into words and i've had it a few times where we're just we just kind of get to a point where if you really follow the train of thought or the train of idea you just sit there and look at each other and it's like oh wait, this is an audio podcast <laughs> so right. that might not be the oh, best is this an audio of... podcast there's video too but a large portion of people listen in oh, so i can't do the pause no, the pauses will work. It, it, no, it'll it'll be fine. Um, the I mean, we could spend the next half hour. We just make it real weird. Just have like a couple yeah, blips and beeps. Yeah, yeah. No, but I I do like some of the things you're saying with this in terms of uh, over identifying with the body, and it kind of brings me back to that idea of becoming a grumpy old person versus somebody who's light. You know, I think it all comes down to that identification with the body. Because as we get older, I think if you are limber psychologically, spiritually, you take that as an invitation to go deeper into spirit, deeper into the heart, because you see like, oh, the body is definitely not a safe place for refuge. <laughs> Whereas if all you've done is identify with the body and the mind, your, your mind starts slipping. You know, like that's the thing is like we get a little forgetful. We you know, it, it doesn't work as well. So then you get really scared. <laughs> and I think that that's where I think a lot of this kind of pivots around is people's inability to feel vulnerable, which is another thing that I really liked about your performances is the vulnerability and the way that you expose your heart and your true intention with a lot of people is just so rare. It's just like such a, um, yeah, it's just so rare. And uh, I think that that is is really scary for people i mean even for me you know with, right, with this show they identify with their mind and the body i mean but the thing is there's a natural i mean every time i perform i do feel a little nervous but i like that i feel nervous because it means i care yeah and i guess the worst point in a person's life is when you just don't care about anything yeah if you don't care then you're you're losing You're just, I don't know. You're just, you're gone. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you got to care about something and that's what's important. Yeah. I think, I think you're, I mean, you could be doing these podcasts and you could be saying in your head, Oh, everybody does podcasts. What's the point of the fucking podcast? The podcast is a vehicle for your greater work. Mm. You know what I mean? It's your, yeah raising the vibration through it's a tool that you're using it's just it's just who cares if everybody's doing podcasts it's you're giving an opportunity to just let people express these ideas and these ideas you're i mean you're trying to raise the vibration yeah yeah aren't it's you i hope so <laughs> what do you mean you hope we'll so what the yeah fuck is wrong with you? yeah <laughs> You're yeah. raising vibration. You're raising the yeah. fucking vibration. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Look, you it's it's a lot of it is like you're in this imaginary world. Who cares? Like as if you could just reflect to your 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 world is the foundation of the world. Yeah. 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 And I don't I know. It... I don't know. Let's talk about last week because I'm saying all this stuff. And I was in a bad place last week. I, I said all these terrible things. And I was like, I hate this world. I, I, I was in a bad place. And we tried to do the podcast like two weeks ago. Uh, was it two? Yeah, yeah, two or one. I don't know. But I, I don't know. if I'm not an authority. I like, what right do I have to say this stuff? I don't know. I don't have any right. But what right does anybody have anything to say about anything? I mean, in the moment, we are constantly recreating ourselves. 
And then yeah. if we're have a strong intention, then it, you know, it's for the greater good. Yeah. Yeah. And that's also why I was just like, yeah, let's just do this again. <laughs> um, and it, it kind of led me back to something that I was going to say, which ties into what you're saying, you know, as I'm, there's also those thoughts as I do this podcast of like, everybody's doing a podcast, you know, and I think despite whatever we, may well, everybody's think, doing a, a, a comedy show. I'm doing yeah. a comedy show too. I'm yeah. doing, come to my show every Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's yeah. doing a show. But the show, you ever, did you read Return to Love? No. Who's that by? Mariana Williamson. Do you know she's running for president? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. I actually was almost getting her on the show, but her scheduler kind of backed out. So. Oh, yeah. Well, she's running for president. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but she inspired a great movement, a uh, love consciousness movement. And through this book called The Course of Miracles. And, and what do you mean? You So you knew Mariana Williamson if you were mm -hmm. trying to get her for on yeah. the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan of her policies. <laughs> But you never read her books. No, no. I recommend reading uh, Return to Love. Okay. Um, anyway, why was I bringing her up? I don't remember what I was talking about. <laughs> we just started geeking out about her. <laughs> yeah. But she, she uh, inspires, I mean, the book is um, Course in Miracles, Fear is an Illusion, Love is the Only Thing That's Real. That's the course of miracles, which means if we're we're not raising the vi love to me means the code word to raise vibration. Yeah. So if if we're gonna commit to our work, um, we're here for a bigger purpose, and so the bigger purpose is to inspire this, and and she nailed it. Like the whole reason why love doesn't work is because it's not supported by our government mm. love is not an important thing in the government yeah Every, everything in the government is done because of business yeah. business is void of love and everything else it's a game so you can be on top and even with all this spirituality we're still stuck in the form of we're still stuck in the business world i mean you still have to you have to figure out a way right yeah money right yeah that's part of it yeah it's weird having those kinds of limitations you know especially when we have a creative endeavor one that might be a little like out of left field where it's like no this really has some heart and people are resonating but like financially how do i make that work within this overarching um, kind of capitalist system, which really doesn't support that. You know, right. it's just like, do I give up on the art or do I continue with what my heart wants despite the overarching circumstances? Like, how do we make those? That's really the great work of anybody in this time who's trying to do something similar and just kind of spreading goodness. It's like, how do I make this work by also not growing selfish too? It'd be so easy to go down a path and commodify whatever it is we're doing to you know make it uh make more money but then you compromise some of the original intention so there's got to be that balance mm. or just get like a day job you know but then that takes away your energy you know i think there's millions of creatives out there who are struggling with this you know especially mm. people who are in their 20s who don't really know what direction they want to go in in life which is a part of what i wanted to do with this show is just Here's all the different possibilities. This key might not be it for you, but it might be for somebody else. You know, just help orient folks, mm. you know. But one of the things that I thought about, you know, um, is like despite whatever it is that you're doing, you know, we all will end up having ideas and thoughts about it not being the thing. You know, I think that that's going to be the par for the course of any good work is that there's yeah. going to be a voice of doubt and it's like, I think if you have that voice of doubt, that is caring, kind of what you were saying. And yeah. it's like, a, it's a sign of like, actually, like, oh, you have resistance? Like, well, everything grows with resistance if you keep yeah. at it. You know? Yeah. Yes. Resistance, I guess, is good sometimes. Yeah.
But some ease is also good. <laughs> but ease is also good. I think that that. Well, you know, the thing is, it it never feels easy for me. It, it's never felt easy. It's never yeah. easy. Yeah. And and I guess that's if you really want something, do something. Well, that's the sacrifice you have to make. It's not never going to be easy. And then you have to be aware. Well. If it becomes too easy, you might take that for granted, you know? You're yeah. not, you know, it, you have to, it's like very natural to struggle a little. Cause, because if, if it's too easy, then you're just going to throw it. Oh, it's too easy. It'll happen again. Here, take this. Take that. Take it. I don't, I, I'll just, and that's what it, what it is for a lot of these, um, oh. People that are well off, things are easy. So, um, I mean, I once saw this well off man. Um, he had a, a camera and he takes it around, he takes pictures. And then one day the camera just, it just, he just left the camera. He accidentally left the camera or broke it or, or something. And he just left it, put it in the trap. He just put it in the garbage can. He didn't want to get it fixed or whatever. Cause he just bought a new one within the next day or whatever. Like overnight shipping, got a new expensive camera. Yeah. Ah! Yeah. It was easy. So he could yeah. throw away this camera. Wow. But you know, they make these cameras, they make, maybe they make a million, maybe they make a hundreds of thousands. I don't know, but there's cameras in Amazon that they just throw away the products because that's what massive capitalism is. You throw away the products so you can make new products. As long as you keep having new products, you'll always make money. But they throw away about, a, I heard something like they throw away about 100,000 products a day. Wow. Amazon. Yeah, I don't doubt it. And, it. and this is for the art of convenience. Yeah. And everybody wants it. Yeah. So I'm no better. I, I I don't know, man. I I guess we're all headed to whatever. Yeah. It's not gonna be pretty. And then everybody's gonna think, well, what happened here? Yeah. I don't know. They don't see the sliding scale. You know, I think no, people you know about... do see the sliding scale. I, I bet they're preparing for it. I don't know, making a home in the mountain or something. Yeah. Whoever's yeah. well off, they'll 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 live the gene. They'll keep the gene, the human humanity alive. Yeah, we are resilient. <laughs> if anything, you know what I would say, you know about uh, this gentleman who threw away the camera. You know, while it was easy for him to get an overnight new camera, you know, if he would have taken the time to like learn about cameras and then had it fixed and like understood the depth of that machine you know his appreciation and his attention on the art of photography or film probably would have been deepened quite a bit right so there's that yeah, thing where it's like you, you it's, missed an opportunity that's right yeah yeah so it's like yeah it would have been more difficult but he would have had a greater appreciation and a sense of who he is in that art and now he's just gonna it, it that hobby is probably not gonna blossom into what it could be you know, and it's like those small things that we're faced with every single day, but we don't choose to lean in to the grading textures of something. So we don't grow. So, you know, I think that that's the case for a lot of people's art. Well, I mean, it's another thing that everybody takes for granted is food, right? Yeah. We don't know it. We don't have this relationship with food because it's grown for us and we don't even know how it's grown for us. And I'm sure there's heavy metal, there's plastic, there's, we're getting a buffet of everything and everybody's yeah. livers are overburdened with, we're, a lot of people are just going to, I mean, I feel like I'm just going to die one day because of the, all the toxins that just, I feel my body already. I get, uh, you know, I get brain fog a lot. Mm. And yeah. I want, I feel like that's because I have a dirty body. I have a dirty yeah. insides. I have a dirty liver. 
Yeah. Like I have brain fog right now. I don't feel okay. You know, I don't feel so human. I don't feel human. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I got brain fog. I'm, I don't know. I don't, I mean, maybe that's an excuse. Maybe I got to meditate more. I don't know. Well, I think but that's I'm, like, the- I'm like, I'm like, I'm over it. I don't feel good every day. Whatever people, there's yeah. people around me. Here's my neighbors who don't feel good because they got acid reflux. There's a whole bunch of people. You, maybe you don't feel that good. Do you feel good? Uh, well, I actually right before this was like a little nauseous from I did like a pretty strenuous workout and was just kind of like not feeling. Yeah, well, you just had COVID. Hot. Why are you doing a fucking yeah. workout? You should you should wait you a know. week. Or so. Yeah. Yeah, that's I, I push. I probably shouldn't push, but if you, you know. push, you could get sick again. Yeah, you that's know your immune true. system lowers after a workout for a bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, luckily this is digital. <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, I think what you're saying is true. I think like we have this added cumulative effect of all the things that we're taking in, and it's not just food too. But like, I was just talking to my roommate about this, like the amount that we use our phones. I think like phone use is going to be seen in 30 years, like cigarette use is now. Like, who knows what that's doing to no, our attention it's already span? Seen a cigarette use. It's yeah. already, seen. It's already yeah. talked. There's a tumor. I mean, why can't somebody just invent an alternative? I, I mean, it's it's cool, it's convenient, and it helps me do the uh, the idiot tower. I wouldn't. I have an audience for the idiot's hour and I wouldn't have an audience otherwise if I didn't have, you know, these little videos to say, ah, oh, it's the idiot's hour. I, I don't like, do you, have you, I, have you ever done barking to promote your show out just cold calls? Hey, come to see the show. No. I've done that so many times. It's, it's sad and depressing outside. Nobody wants to listen to you and doesn't, you know, they don't. They hate you. And I understand because I was the other side of somebody trying to tell me and I just walked past them. And I guess what it trained me to do is not take it personal. But I mean, it's better. It's better to promote like promote on the Internet. It really is. You don't. Yeah. You know, it then people can see what you're doing and. But you, you really do have to talk to individuals. Hey, come to my show. You, I mean, you have to find the people that like you. That's yeah. what people do. And I'm not very, I'm not very social like that. So the internet has helped me get people to the show. So I, I mean, it's a double edged sword, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it's also very toxic and, and I don't know, Steve Jobs was a toxic man himself. So he he mm. he took acid and he had a moment and he's like, I got to do this. And he felt like he was helping the world. But I mean, Steve Jobs' legacy is that he destroyed the world. I don't know. Maybe yeah. not. I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, he really... It's hard to say. It really is. Yeah. It's really hard to say because... There's, there are people, I mean, when COVID happened, people really got sucked into their phone and stuff. Yeah. I feel like it did amp up quite a bit in 2020. Like, I feel like my brain has functioned differently since then. I don't think it's like just having had COVID, but like the way my relationship to my phone, like I'm always on the dang thing in a way that feels just so invasive. And it's like, yeah, it's my choice, but something happened. I don't know. I'm blaming the outside world on this one. Yeah. Blame me. I did. Okay. It. Yeah. Dang it, Matthew. No, I did it. You know what I did? I what? I had a video. Here's the thing. The video did two things, right? It inspired an emotion. Be more lighter. Gratitude. Create. Inspire. Love. I didn't create the video. Somebody else did. But um. the other thing the video did was just say everybody's – Oh, I want to be famous too. Let me be famous. And now and now um people get uh viral videos ever they get more viral videos often, right? So it's it's polluted us too because it nobody wants to be working for anybody like yourself and you you know, you'll have some you probably have already had some amazing podcasts so you will 
take some clips and you'll put them on your Instagram or YouTube or whatever and you know cross your fingers if they go viral you will get people come to your podcast right yeah yeah I mean that's how it works and we shouldn't condemn it because we're using it but how I mean are we is there going to be a way that we don't all just become I always liked how that is that Disney movie with the two robots and then all the people are on the spaceship and they're all fat yeah. and they're yeah yeah wailing around on their chair and yeah. that was a that was a good commentary I mean yeah. that's that's probably not too far from the truth I mean that that's what's gonna happen we're all gonna be sitting on a chair comfortable not paying attention to the world around us and just yeah. And the, and we'll be next to the person, but we won't be talking to the person. We'll be talking to them on, on this thing. Yeah. So, you know, we're getting a little close to the end here, but I do want to just ask a little bit about uh, the Idiot's Hour and give you a time to just kind of uh, express just this project you've been working on. And you've also been doing well, like it, workshops. It's, 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 it's inspired by performance, but... You 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 got to realize like that's why I brought up Mariana Williamson. You're the thing that you do is a church for so people can practice giving and receiving love. I mean, if you open up a store, or you do a podcast. It's it's there was a uh, she made like a prayer in one of her book in in her book, and it said, "Dear God." You know, I forgot it. I say it all the time, <laughs> but my brain is not letting me. Um, I wish I had a better working brain. We'll just have to move forward. It's like a church. To me, it's the Idiot's Hour is a church for seeing the performer as you. Like, it's the, pra it's the intention. Don't go there and be an audience member and look on your phone and, and not, like, these are real people who want to express themselves, who are finding their voice. Let's, let's, grow a garden a sunflower garden of light where we can actually see each other as as light and it doesn't matter who that person is it's just like there's a there's a there's it's, and you know it comes out weird sometimes it comes out twisted sometimes it comes out evil or good or really positive and really happy i mean everything needs to be shown we need a theater where we can't cancel people. I, I don't know. You know, just like let people feel safe to. I don't feel safe to express everything I hold back. But if we're all going to go crazy if we can't say what's on our mind, you know, and people really got to test the limits and say, but, you know, you could get in trouble if you, you know, you could put your foot in your mouth. You say what's on your mind to the wrong person. It could go the wrong way. Sometimes you don't even have to do anything. It just could be like, you know, a look like, and people could be offended by that look. And, you know, when you perform, you're very vulnerable up there. And then if somebody's like sleeping or looking like it can, if you're a newbie, it can affect you and you can take it personally. But I I think I've performed enough where I'm not taking it personal. But it's also a training ground. I mean, I'm using it as a portal to grow love consciousness. To, to me, it's important, like, here's the world. Yes, we all need to create bubbles of community where we feel safe to speak whatever is on our mind. Yeah. We do. You need it. You need to express things. And and you can't judge people for having this opinion or that opinion. Yeah, we've really got to be open to each other. We can't cancel. I yeah, cancel culture is dying right now. Mm -hmm. But then there's always in the next few years there's always going to be a moment where people are like Arr! and maybe it needs to happen because it it helps people be more aware, you know. So yeah, all the fights and arguments it needs to happen, but we also need. I don't know. It's rarely on this planet is it in a state of peace and tr tranquility. 
at least yeah. not in my mind. And maybe I'm disturbed. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. I don't. I I should meditate more. Maybe maybe I'd be able to see the planet as a place of peace if I can just meditate. You know. I well, don't know. I don't maybe I'm a hypocrite. Maybe I'm I'm a toxic person. I should die. Kill me now. <laughs> Sorry. I'm I, I don't think that's it. Um, I don't think the world has ever been peaceful though. I mean, that's coming even from like a Buddhist perspective. I think the more that we want that, the more upset we're going to be. The exactly. Order, I mean, yeah. the world started with our world started with a lot of wars. Yeah. Even before that, I mean, the the planet was constructed in fire and like molten lava and raging storms. And, you know, like this space has suffering. It has tension and violence. And we have to find resiliency within that. You know, and like become bastions of clarity and stability despite that, you know. Mm. So it's just like, I, I, yeah, when people get really caught on the changing the world and it's just like, yeah, it, what, what's the saying? It's um, it's easier to, rather than trying to cover the world in leather, just cover your feet in leather, <laughs> you know, like instead of yeah. changing everything, just make yourself more resilient and then see what happens with that. Yeah, then, no, then, it, it's, I mean, the world is a training ground to, to work on yourself. You know, that's another thing by doing the show. I learn the message of not, I, I practice the message of not taking things personally, being impeccable with your word. The more I do something that I care about, the more it trains me to be more enlightened, you know, yeah. I'm constantly being tested and I'm constantly have this choice. Do I take this personal? No, no. According to agreements, you should never take anything personal. If you take things personal, you're just creating more poison and you're putting it back into the world. Yeah. 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 Well, I think that that's a good spot to end. So real quick before we do, though, do you have anything that you'd like to plug? Any shows coming up? Um, I'm yeah, going to try and get this. Come Wednesday to the Idiot's Hour. 8 p.m., a real local connecting underground experience. I mean, it's... Where's that at? Where are you located? Uh, the the Idiot's Hour is at 220 Thompson. It's on. It's a block and a half south of Washington uh, Square Park. Cool. Right on. Um, I'm located in uh, New Jersey, if that's what your question okay. was. Partially, yeah. I, for some reason, thought New York. I don't know. Well, I've don't... been in New York for years, but That's, I, never, okay. I can't afford New York. I just yeah. want to live with my parents. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, every Wednesday, you heard it here, folks. So, Matthew, thank you so much for giving me some of your time. Uh, it's been a pleasure to get to know you a little bit. Yeah, thanks for giving me your time. Yeah. All right. We'll catch you next time. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. You're oh, welcome. You're very, thank you. very, very welcome. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening all the way through until the end. I really do make this show for you. That was Matthew Silver. You can find him at Matthew Silver on all of the social media platforms. I personally keep up with him over on Instagram where he's doing a lot of these little skits and reels, and it's a lot of fun. So uh, thank you so much again for listening. And if you want to support this show, you can follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, or subscribe on YouTube. We also got a Patreon. I only have one reward bracket there, and it's pretty much a glorified tip jar, but it does help keep the lights on. That's patreon.com slash 21st Century Vitalism. We will see you in a couple weeks with another episode. All right, thanks. <laughs>